Hello folks and welcome to part three, part three of the DOE uh, testimonial investigation, uh, the submittal by the, by the folks in the Stanton Wearsdale community to DOE. Uh, so let's take a look at exactly what's, um, what's happened over the last say 50 years, uh, 75 years, 70 years. Uh, in this black community. See if they got a fair shake. We're gonna take you down some of the roads, show you the difference between the, what the county spent in the white area and in the black area. All right, let's just take a look. Okay, we're gonna start on 134th Terrace and visit this community and perhaps uh, we'll come away with a little better understanding and a little bit more fairness. Where we turn in, there isn't even a stop sign for student safety in the walk-in zone. Okay, well we've just driven in from the white area in the walk-in zone, and now we're turning in to the black area. And this is what you can expect as you head into Colored Town. No stop signs, no sidewalks, no safety features. Now remember, for over 70 years, this was the primary walk-in. This was the walk-in zone for generations of black Any people. road to and from a school and all the roads in this area were paved, except in the black area. Is where this road was used. That gate, everything went in for 50 years. This is a county road. It was the county access. It's the only other safety way in and out. And there is your street sign. The county can change these signs from green to white to avoid all responsibility. The road is switched to private. So let's get out of the vehicle for just a moment. Games are really being played here. This has never been a fair, honest, decent walk-in zone. This is the road that supplied the school through those gates. The trucks, all services, all meals, everything came up this road including students okay so let's get back in the truck and we'll we'll continue down uh, this tour this road in the black community now it's easy to complain and indicate the obvious this is discriminatory it's not equal to the white area just up the road about a couple of hundred yards uh, the problem is that doesn't get much solved like in, in the Parkland situation, you can tell authorities about uh, this disparity, but it often, it doesn't fall through a crack. What happens is it ends up, it ends up being met by an excuse from the governmental authorities. This fence is an example. In the last couple of years, the government has allowed it, and now even a sidewalk can't go in. Now, if you're a black child walking to school under Title VI, this, uh, this isn't an academic or statistical situation. This is what you have to face. Look at this, no culvert. Over here on the white side, very clear, very safe. Back over here on the, on the black side, not so much. Uh, over here on the white side, yep, automatically you can tell where you are that you're in an area. Now you're in an area where there's discrimination. Does anybody have any trouble understanding this is the black area, the discriminated area? Does anybody have any trouble understanding this is the white area? No, and that's why we have Title VI. Things are getting worse, not better. This is just a few years back. This is a Google map. Shows plenty of room on the, left, on the right hand side uh, where now there's this fence that exists. The fence was newly put in and agreed to, really, and recognized by the county. The problem is that we're in the walk-in zone uh, for the Stanton Wearsdale School. Even with water retention, the blacks are denied use of the big water retention area and have to use this little tiny one. Everybody's involved in this area. Uh, the Sheriff's Department, School Board, uh, Congressman Webster, 
uh, golly, we've got, uh, this is Bobby James, we've got all sorts of folks who are very involved in, in solving this problem. Here's State Senator Dennis Baxley uh, alongside our district commander. And so we've got all kinds of people that are, that are uh, pulling together, and now what we have to do is actually implement and remove, implement Title VI and remove, remove the bubble that is over Stanton Weirsdale and the Stanton Weirsdale School District. So you see the puddles, you see the problems. This is coming off a county road. It's coming from a packing house. This is the walk-in area in the black section. And there's just, it's just lacking uh, uh, the, the basic fundamental services uh, that are over in the white area. Now, this is a walk-in person's home. Uh, seven children were raised in this home, and it's gotten worse and worse and worse. Now, imagine that you're a child in a walk-in zone. Uh, this particular home now, all the children have gone. Uh, seven of the inhabitants of this home have gone into the U.S. military. Uh, it's just, it's, 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 um, it's, a, it's a battle that cannot be solved from inside the black community. This particular stretch of the road going, this is 100, 134th Avenue, uh, uh, 134th Avenue Road, uh, they were within this, this home was within four, uh, six days of the, the end of the statute of limitations. They filed suit, and now the entire area is considered um, hostile. And the county commission really won't even talk to these people now. Now just view, if you were a child trying to walk to the school, this is the other feeder road, 166th. Uh, so the school district refers to the, uh, to the responsibility to the county. The county, the county commission. The county commission refers to the school board. The, the uh, governor's office refers to local authority. Look how bad this is if you're faced with this kind of a situation, this discrimination as a child in the walk-in zone. These authorities play ping pong back and forth with the responsibility and they get away with it for over a hundred years. The school board and the county should lose federal funding over this level of discrimination. This is what a culvert and this is what stormwater, uh, how it's dealt with in the white area. And when, you're, when you discriminate, when you don't put in the sidewalks, you don't put in a simple culvert, then it begins to look like what, we, what, we, what a child is faced with, with the walk-in zone. It's absolute deprivation. It's absolute discrimination. It's as though in this area, in this little black community, there is a bubble over the community and Title VI no longer works and no longer prevails. No culverts, culverts only on the white side, and then on the black side, not so much. It's been over a half a century that the school board, the county commission, the state, and the federal folks have really overlooked the problems and the discrimination with the black community at the Stanton Wearsdale School. It's a small part of the walk-in zone, very small, less than a quarter of a mile of a two-mile walk-in zone. But you've got to come down, OCR has got to come down, take a look at this, and help the next generations uh, um, get at least a fair shake. Okay, help us stop discrimination in the walk-in zone.